It says, we, the jury, find beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, George Washington Wagner IV, is guilty of aggravated murder as charged in count one of the indictment. It Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Junk, and I'm the public information officer for the Pike County EMA. And I stepped up to help with the press conference tonight because it's kind of my thing. Um, I would like to introduce to you Prosecutor Rob Junk, Special Prosecutor Angie Canepa, Special Prosecutor Andrew Wilson. We have Timothy Dickerson down on the end. He is the Pike County EMA director, and he was one of the assisting investigators from the Pike County Sheriff's Office. We have Major Al Lewis, who was also um, investigative lead from the Pike County Sheriff's Office, and Ryan Scheider, who is the BCI lead in the investigations on the case. So I will hand it over to Rob. Thank you. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And obviously it's been a long, uh, about 11 weeks. And first I'd like to express my greatest sympathy to the Manly, Roden, and Gilly families. They stuck with us through the whole investigation, through the whole trial. Uh, we don't get that level of cooperation. I apologize. <coughs> From every victim's family we deal with, and I just want to say we appreciate everything you have done for us and sticking with us. Good one today and evil lost. I want to thank our prosecution team, right, Angela Canepa and Andrew Wilson. They spent many, many long hours, a lot of work and teamwork, and finally culminated in a Pike County jury making the right decision today to all the charges in this case, every single one of them. And I thank you for everything you've done to help me with this case. Neither of you had to come in and help, but you did, and I appreciate that, and I thank you. I want to thank Governor Mike DeWine. He was our Attorney General when this case started. He never let us down. He helped, helped with us he through everything. We appreciate everything he's done for us, the resources. The Attorney General got the case started. He stuck with us, and he believed with us. Also want to thank Attorney General Dave Yost for, for providing BCI to us. You know, the B, there are several of BCI agents here. I'm going to introduce them here in a little bit. They're hiding in the back of the room. I want to say a thank you to them uh, with BCI and the Attorney General's help. They are the reason that we won this case. I do want to thank our county commissioners, Tony Montgomery, Jerry Miller, and Jeff Chatton. Uh, they supported us from the beginning. If we needed money, if something had to be uh, funded you know, for the local end of this, they did it. We are a poor county. We are still a poor county, as you've uh, probably seen here, but we've got a lot of good people here. I'd like to uh, thank the special agents, analysts, and forensic scientists at BCI who spent literally years working on this case. They never gave up, ever. I can speak to my left for Special Agent Ryan Scheider. He was the lead agent on the case. He, he had to cut short vacations, give up vacations, thing like that. He was the lead agent on our case. He did everything. He and his team are the reason we're able to be here today. Sir Ryan, thank you. Thank you, sir. And some of you are hiding back there. I'm going to maybe move a little bit there, but uh, some of our investigation team is here. And all the way in the back, I want to recognize criminal intelligence analyst Julia Eversley. Let us know who you are. And to her left, my right, would be criminal intelligence analyst Dana Forney. Then Special Agent Jenny Comsford. Special Agent John Jenkins. Special Agent Jim Mulford and Special Agent Shane Hanshaw. 
you may recognize several of them from their testimony in this case. I think it's nice having people like that you can put on the stand. They know they know what to say. They know how to present evidence. They know more than just gathering evidence. Part of it is being able to present it, and that is what they did. I also want to recognize a couple other people here from Pike County Sheriff's Office, and we have our hiding in the back there and say something, Sheriff Evans. We have the Pike County Sheriff, Tracy Evans, is here. He was actually a uh, major at the Pike County Sheriff Sheriff's Office when this case came up. But up here in front, I've got two gentlemen with us here to uh, Ryan's left, Al Lewis, retired major from the Pike County Sheriff's Office. He was with the investigation through the whole time. We've got now our emergency management director, Tim Dickerson. Tim was a major at the time. Both these gentlemen were assigned to the case, worked long and hard hours. Tim ended up becoming the emergency management director, but both these guys spent long hours assisting BCI. They were the local component in this case. And again, as a uh, small county, there is no way we would have been able to do this alone. No way at all. You know, I just can't thank everybody enough for pitching in, the you know, BCI, sheriff's offices, and there are plenty of other sheriffs out there too uh, that pitched in. I remember being out on the scenes. There were sheriff's offices, law enforcement agencies from all over Ohio that pitched in to help us. And we thank you for that. There's also a lot of other people, again, sheriff's deputies, special agents, other analysts, forensic scientists that you didn't see testify but were equally vital to the case. You know, by, with a case like this, you see the people uh, you up in court testifying, you see us as the prosecutors, but there's also a lot of people out there that put a heck of a lot of time in this case that you didn't see, and I want to give a thanks to them too. It's kind of like you, know, you go out to maybe a you concert or some public event, you see the people up there speaking, but you don't see the people that put it together, the nuts and bolts, like the sound and the things like that. It's the same way with a case like this. It truly was a team effort. This is exactly what can happen when agencies work together to do the right thing and to get justice. And also, too, I'd be remiss not to thank our jury members for their time, dedication, and their willingness to serve this, I believe, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, has been the longest criminal trial in uh, the Pike County history, if not uh, the state of Ohio history. My longest trial before this case was a homicide trial, but it lasted five days. Most of my homicide trials in the past have been five days, and this eclipses that by just about uh, 10 weeks. But the thing is, is slowly but surely, never lost sight of the goal and again good one out today and evil lost thank you i'd like to turn everything over to angie you're up now well that's a hard act to follow um i want to start with the victim's family um you know, it's been a long time, and I feel like we've grown to be practically family. Um, I tried hard during openings and closings to do my best to bring to life your family that was killed, and I just want to mention them. You know, Gary and Chris, Hannah Hazel, Frankie, Hannah Mae, little Chris, Dana, Kenneth, as I said in my opening and my close, there was no reason for them to die. No reason for them to die. And I have to say that when we were doing jury selection, and I think I shared this with some of you, it really brought them to life for me because there were so many people in the community that knew your loved ones and talked so fondly about them. And I just want you guys to know that. That was not a part of the trial that was covered. So a lot of the other people didn't get to see that, but it meant so much to me and to the others. I also would like to thank 
our investigative team, both here and in the back, and <coughs> others that aren't here, but frankly, the ones that are here are, are pretty much the core of the people that really fought hard for this case and fought for it from day one, <coughs> even when a whole lot of people thought that we, we would never be able to get to where we are now. Um, and of course, I would like to echo Rob's comments about the family. You guys have trusted us with your lives and the lives of your loved ones. And I know today's verdict does not bring your loved ones back. I know that. But I do hope that it gives you some semblance of peace that yet another one of the evil monsters that did this to your family has been held accountable. Um, also like to thank Rob because he also put his faith in me and made it possible for me to stay on this case even after I left the Attorney General's office. He fought hard. I know I had the support of the family as well that, that helped with that as well and, and Special Agent Scheider also helped with that. But thank you Rob very much for, for fighting for me and um, obviously Andy for coming on board. Um, I think I tricked him into coming on board, but um, I think it was a good, uh, good steal on my part. So, um, yeah. That's all. And uh, we personally thanked the jury and uh, hugged each one of them because, you know, their attention was steadfast and they carefully considered everything and came up with the right verdict. So, thank you. I'm Andy Wilson. Uh, first of all, to the family, uh, I want to echo uh, what both Rob and Angie said. Um, thank you for putting your trust in us. You know, we just can't imagine. Nobody in this room, nobody watching this can imagine <coughs> the, the, the pain and the, and the suffering that you've had to go through. And we had the ability to, to watch you over the last couple months as we, we laid out the, the evidence of, of what had happened to your family members. And I, I, again, I just can't imagine being in your shoes, how incredibly difficult to, to hear and see the, the, that story, how difficult it must have been. And, and you handled yourself with grace, you handled yourself with dignity, and you handled yourself with restraint. And I will be forever amazed at your ability to, to do that and, and really what you did is you represented your family well. And under conditions like this, there's just not much more that you could do. And, and I'm sure they would be so proud of the fact that you stood vigilant for them through this process. Uh, I also have to, again, like Rob and Angie, uh, thank the investigators. As you saw, as, as everybody saw as, as we laid out the, the, this case, the, the, the strength of this presentation was solely on the backs of the work that the analyst, the investigators, and the scientists at BCI did. We do not get here today without their tenacity, without their dedication. They never gave up. They believed in the case from day one. They ran down every lead, and through their hard work, they were able to obtain some measure of justice. So again, I've never seen, in, in my entire career in, in law enforcement and prosecution, I've never seen an investigation that has been done this well, that was this complex, and that the folks who were involved in the trenches were so dedicated to. I also would like to, to thank the people of Pike County. You know, Angie and I, I, actually a lot of the investigators, a lot of the team who worked on this case were not from Pike County. And we've had the opportunity to, to really live down here uh, for the last couple of months as Pike County residents, pretty much. Uh, and I've been so impressed uh, with the people of, of Pike County. First of all, the court staff and just the logistics that it takes to present a case like this, especially we, we didn't have much of a support team. So the, the logistics that it took to make sure that we were able to present our exhibits when we needed to present them. We were able to accommodate our witnesses and, and get everybody in and out. It was absolutely unbelievable what this small county was able to provide for us. And again, Rob opened up his, his checkbook for the office. Anything we needed, 
we, we got uh, anything that was necessary for us to do the presentation of this case. Both Rob, the county commissioners, and the court staff uh, accommodated. So it was, it was really kind of amazing uh, given the, the, the small team that we had. Uh, and then again, the, the people of Pike County. Man, hardworking, blue collar, great people. And they, they supported us across the, the board. And again, it, I, I think it was really evident in the jury. You know, if you look at that jury, they, they paid attention from beginning to end. And it was tedious at times, it was long, uh, but they were engaged throughout the whole process. And, and because of their attention, because of their dedication to their civic duty, they were able to turn, return a, a just verdict. And then finally, uh, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't thank Governor Mike DeWine. You know, when he was Attorney General, he believed in this case. From day one, he believed that the investigators were gonna find who was responsible for this and that they were gonna bring him to justice. And he never gave up. Even after he left the Attorney General's office, when, when Pike County needed help uh, and needed extra support, he was willing to, uh, to pitch in. And, and uh, he dedicated the resources of, of the Department of Public Safety, Tom Stickrath over there, Public Safety. Uh, again, anything we needed. He had his IT guy down here bringing us printers and, and some, some computer stuff that we needed back in October. So uh, the dedication of the governor and his administration to ensure that justice was done, uh, again, helped uh, get us to this day. So with that, I think who's next? Al? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Alan Lewis. I'm a retired major from the uh, Pike County Sheriff's Office and 23 Major Crimes Task Force. I uh, well, got called the first day whenever it occurred and worked this case all the way through. First of all, the family, my hearts. Always goes out to you. Uh, I can't stress enough that, you know, your support. When we were low, I was wondering if we was ever going to work our way through this. You guys supported us. I appreciate that. And I wish Wilma was here. Uh, yeah, Wilma's my buddy. But thank all of you, and my heart will always go out to you. Um, there was nothing more a team effort than this case. I can't, I can't stress that enough from day one. I was lucky enough to partner up with, with uh, BCI and Agent Ryan Scheider over here, and uh, what a partner. Uh, you know, we, uh, we complimented each other a lot on the way we worked, and then there was also some days we didn't compliment each other. But uh, lucky to have him on the case. And all these people in the back, you know, from BCI, the you know, Pike County Sheriff's Office, Ross County, 23 Major Crimes Task Force, Pickway County. I mean, I, I can't stress enough what a team effort this was that everyone pulled together and worked this case. And then the prosecutors, you know, Rob, Angie, Andy. Uh, I don't know the late night conversations that Angie and I'd have. We would call wanting warrants and different things. And uh, we all went to Alaska. I made two trips to Alaska, following them around. And uh, I, I just can't, you can't express the magnitude of an investigation of this and this group that we had. I mean, they're truly, the old saying, there's no I in team, and that's what this was. This team is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we come through it, we've got one more to go. And he's next. And we're going to win that one, too. But once again, you know, the family, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry we had to meet this way. I want to echo what Andy said about you know, Governor Mike DeWine. Uh, at the time, he was over BCI, Attorney General, Tom Stickrath. We met for months, for a while it was weekly. And whatever we needed, they got us. And an investigation like that, that's, that's the type of, of help and backing that we needed. So uh, they've always will have my support because they gave it to us when we needed it. And I just want to thank all of you and all of you in the back and everyone around this room. So thank you so much.
Um, my name is Tim Dickerson. I was a major at the time and one of the first responders to the scene. Um, I was only advised a few hours ago that I was asked to speak, and I, uh, I appreciate it very much. Um, to the family, this is your day, and uh, I hope it provides some relief. Um, and I just want to thank Special Prosecution. I'm going to leave somebody out, uh, my friend and colleagues, Ryan and Al, and all the BCI agents and law enforcement officers in the back uh, for allowing me the privilege uh, to serve alongside them and help the day come about in my small way. Thank you. Can the investigative team come up? Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. Don't hide. Don't hide. I'm proud yeah. of what you're doing. <laughs> Star witness Julia M. Slage. <laughs> wow. Dana. Jenny. <laughs> Special agent Jenkins, Mulford, and Hanshaw. Yeah, sorry. Give these gentlemen and ladies a round of applause for their work. And at this time, I believe the prosecution team will entertain some questions. Rob, a, a lot of times, as Let me get up to where you can get my voice yes, here. Yes, please. Hey, I'll, I will try and answer your questions. If I can't, there's people up here that are way smarter than me that could probably give you the right answer. <laughs> Yes, sir. As prosecutors, yes. a lot of times in your line of work, your job is to speak for people who can no longer speak for themselves. Absolutely. What does it mean to you and this team to today for the eight members of this family whose voices were violently silenced? I'd be fair to say their voices were heard today. As you can tell, it still kind of gets to me. I'm normally not like this. But Justice was done, and again, they heard the voices of our eight victims today. The jury listened. They understood, and in some small way, we can never, ever, ever bring them back, but I can tell you that, good Lord willing, George Wagner IV will never be in a position to hurt anyone ever, ever again. Are you going to be asking for the same kind of sentence for him that uh, Jake got life in prison without parole? I mean, I know that we still have to go for pre-sentencing and everything else. It, uh, what, are you, what are you looking for? Okay, at this point, I really can't comment on that. This is going to sound kind of weird. I'm kind of like bound by a couple of things. The case is still pending. Obviously, we're not allowed to talk about pending issues. Um, I will say this. Um, you have an individual that went uh, through a trial. I think everyone can um, make a pretty fair assumption as to what the jurors thought of his testimony, and I should probably just leave it at that. But uh, there will be a sentencing set. We don't know the date yet. The judge wants to give everybody a chance to catch, catch, that, catch calendars and those, those type of things. But yeah, I would love to answer that question for you, and you could probably figure out what I would probably say, but I'm just not allowed to answer it. What do you make of how quickly the jury came back? I mean, after 10 plus weeks of testimony, seven hours seems quick. Perhaps it does not to you. If, for a case like this, and uh, I'll also uh, defer to co-counsel as well, it uh, was pretty quick. What do you make of that? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, they just they believe yeah. They, they, yeah, I, I was going to say it. Uh, yeah, but some of, some of the questions they asked, they're obviously going through the charges, but uh, yeah, they saw, uh, I hesitate to use the word mountain of evidence, but Ryan and his team had a huge amount of evidence that you, all of us put on. I think that had something to do with it. And if they were impressed by uh, George Wagner the Fourth's testimony, it, wasn't, uh, it did not show in their verdicts. As a follow-up to that, yes, sir. I'd like to get all, all three of you to answer that. When they called his name to the stand, what was your reaction? 
by, by the time they called him to the stand, we pretty much expected it. You know, we could sense that that was what was going to happen, and I think they didn't really have a choice at that point, um, you know, because they had not been able to rebut the evidence that we had put on, I think, at that point. So I think they, they only had that option. And I know Andy mentioned this in his closing yesterday, but uh, some people were asking why not play the tape of him to contradict himself, why not play the tape of him in Montana? Yep. You guys want to talk about that, why yeah. you didn't? Why you made that strategic yep. decision not yep. to play that, and was it so he couldn't cater his testimony to that? Right, so correct, and, and Mr. Wilson did cover this. We made that decision because we didn't want to put his defense on for him, you know, because he denied that his family and him did this, you know, throughout the, the interview. Of course, he said some things in that interview that were completely opposite of the things he said on the stand. So by not playing his statement, you put him in a position where he pretty much has the only choice of getting on the stand if he wants to present his defense, and that gives us an opportunity to expose his untruths, right? So, you know, he admitted to saying the things that I was crossing him on, um, so I didn't have to play it, you know, but I just pointed out the discrepancies between what he was saying. And Baby Scheider, do you want to talk about your team? And, Actually, uh, one of us will have to speak on Agent Scheider this evening. Uh, the three of us, Major Lewis, Major Dickerson, will try our best to uh, answer any investigative questions we can. Well, I would think, I mean, actually the jury, you know, when a mother comes in and says that her son was involved in a crime of this magnitude, you know, it is not going to be common that a mother would come in and say that her son did something that they didn't actually do, right? It, more likely that they would come in and say he didn't do something that he did. Um, so I think that clearly had a huge impact on the on the jury. I mean, not I think they obviously. Far, not to look too far ahead, and I know this is a big moment, but obviously it's been mentioned Billy Wagner is still pleading not guilty. Andy, are you going to stick with the prosecution team or are you going back to the governor's office? Angie, what are your plans? I mean, how is this going to progress? I know Mr. Junk is going to become the judge. How does this all play out in the next two months? Look, I, I think we need to just get through tonight. Right. We need to enjoy this moment. <laughs> yeah. And just. At, after tonight, we'll we'll sit down and we'll we'll come up with our, our war game for how we're going to do that. I can say I'm not going anywhere. No, nope. unfortunately, like <laughs> yeah. Andy, you're Andy, you also spoke about how you broke close to the family over the last several years, right, and during the trial as well. But can you speak to whenever the family members come together and talk about Well, obviously, as you can tell, like, uh, I'm still a bit emotional. I'm normally not that way. I'm one of these people that, like, pride myself on, like, not getting, you know, not breaking down over anything. But this case is a little bit different. I tell you that. He's working with our family members, and then he did just, then some of the, some of the things that we saw and everything like that we're never going to talk about. There's a lot that you did not see that uh, like that it, it affects you and just getting the jury and you know, getting the jury give uh, guilty verdicts the first when the first one came in uh, you know we got you you uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably wrong probably the wrong thing to say but you know what I'm from Pike County I'm gonna talk like I'm from Pike County I'm not gonna hide it so that's exactly what went through my mind they uh, I was relieved that just still, like, never thought this day would ever happen. Again, really, really long trial. Just, uh, it's, there's still a lot, a lot of things to process on it. Again, the jury did the right thing. Good one. Was That's there ever a point in the investigation, when we talk about the investigation, you walked us through every single step, and Agent, even Agent Scheider testified as to when they officially really became in the crosshairs and suspects. Yes, sir. But from the prosecution's team perspective, was there ever a moment that you thought, okay, 
these guys are the ones who really did it. I mean, was there one piece of evidence that said, okay, that tipped the scales for you from being suspects to being, okay, this is, this is, these are our guys? Yeah, go ahead, Angie. I mean, I, I would say it was probably about the same time the investigative team thought that, which was probably, I mean, yeah. September of 16 yeah. is when we, you know, thought that. And and then, you know, kind of as he said, you, you try to rule them in or rule them out, and every page that we turned ruled them in more, you know. So every little piece of evidence, you know, you start getting the financial records and seeing these purchases and, you know, and it culminates in, in finding a silencer in the well, you know. Um, but all through that, every single time, it just was like more and more and more, you know, once we started. I, I wish we would have figured it out sooner, <laughs> um, yeah. certainly. But but I would say, you know. Finding the shell casing oh. the yeah. way that then you find, turns out, matches one at the border. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was that point for me. I can remember when... Al gave me a call. I'm trying to remember what I was doing, but he's like, you're not going to believe this. And then told me about the collected and matched to the ones at the scene. Oh, which, thinking, yeah. got them. And then, and then, of course, when Ms. Eversledge found the uh, receipt for the Walmart yep. shoes, um, That's what I, I think there was lots of hugging that day and yep. you know, maybe some crying as well um, because that was just uh, another... Wait, were there times in the early days when you when take you us back it? to the very beginning, to the first day that this happened? See, <laughs> what did you think you had on your hands? Do you mind, do you mind moving over to the podium? Yeah. Go okay. ahead and grab that, Al. The question is, what did you think you had? Yeah, I've been sworn law enforcement officer since 81, and this wasn't my first homicide scene by all, oh, but I've never been on anything of this magnitude. And... Um, going from you know the different scenes and biggest thing is you don't make assumptions you follow the evidence and, and you you follow where it takes you and we worked as hard proving some of the people uh, I want to say they're say suspects I want to say persons of interest we worked as hard proving those people weren't involved in this as we did as hard as proving the Wagners did do it. And that was something that this lady here insisted on. And she was absolutely right. It had to be done. It was tough. That, that was a real hard part of this investigation. But going back to, to the beginning, I just tried to keep an open mind. Um, you know, uh, you had the indoor grow that was there, so naturally that was one of the you know, my, my background for the last 20 years has been in major drug investigations. So that was something we was concerned about, but I've never seen a whole family killed over something like that because the whole family wasn't involved in it. Angie um, mentioned September of 16. They come to the crosshairs. I'm sorry? Angie mentioned September of 16. They came to the crosshairs. You guys kind of knew you had them. I remember Governor DeWine, when he was AG, saying something along the lines of, Focus like a laser on the Wagners when he publicly said that for the first time. Yep. Were there times in the early goings where you all wondered whether you would get to this point before they kind of came into focus? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you always have your doubts somewhat, but but we knew that we we would get there. I mean, I personally had faith we would get there. You, you don't have a, something of this magnitude that you don't get a break somewhere. It just you got to stay at it. You got to stay focused on it. That was a big thing. Don't let all the other things that's going on in the background distract you from what we're trying to trying to find out who killed our eight victims. That was the main thing. This is for Judge Randy Deering was a strong presence in the courtroom, um, especially for those of us in the media and in the gallery. I wonder if you might comment on his um, handling of the case. Cool. Hey, we still have the same thing. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we still have Billy Wagner to deal with in a sentencing. Uh, again, that's something like that at some point we will be able to answer that question. I apologize for not being able to do it now, but uh, I was going to say you all got to see the uh, you got to see the trial. You got to see how Judge Deering handled the handled the case, and I would refer to you for your opinions on it. How does that sound? We haven't heard from Ryan. I was just going to see if he could come up and say some words. Um, 
Give me one second. You want me to handle that? Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, one of us will have to uh, speak on behalf of uh, Ryan. The Attorney General's office uh, is going to apparently make their own statement. That's why you haven't heard from Ryan or any of the special agents tonight. But uh, one of us would be more than happy to uh, try and address your question on that. Well, what goes through your mind? So when you get told that there's a verdict, there's about an hour of downtime before we actually hear the judge read those verdict forms, what's going through the prosecution team's mind during that hour or so? I, I can tell you what I was thinking is like, please, good Lord, make sure it's a guilty verdict for everyone. That's what I was thinking. I will defer to my co-counsel on this for their opinions on it. That was exactly what was going through my mind. Lots of prayers. Yep, did a heck of a lot of praying. Could the counsel speak at all on not only just the evidence that you had to support this, but also the testimony as well from, you know, how, how crucial is that in helping the case? Yeah. yeah, you know, one of the things we talked about is not only were th was the investigative team dedicated through the investigation and never gave up and did anything, no matter how ridiculous it was, the prosecutor wanted them to do. But their commitment to this case followed through in their appearing as witnesses and testifying. They dropped everything, con you know, continued to sacrifice for this case, and were just there. We never had a problem getting anybody here, and that included our civilian witnesses too. I mean. Kendra here in the stand, April, who hated me for calling her as a witness because, <laughs> hate's a strong word, but it's close, because she couldn't come and listen to the trial until she was released as a witness. So just, we had s people that believed in the cause and just helped us and made it, 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 it was without a hitch. I mean, we were just talking about that. We didn't have any problems getting evidence or witnesses. And that just, I mean, and that's just a magnificent thing for a prosecutor. It makes our job so much easier. Not that 11 weeks of evidence, 10 weeks of evidence is easy, but um, they made it as easy as possible. I, I'd like to add something on what Angie just said. Yeah. Sorry, but all of our families, you know, my wife and my two sons, what they went through, what Ryan's family, everyone here that worked this case, I can't stress that enough. You know, the, not only the hours, but you know, there was there was threats made against some of the investigative team that we took those threats to heart. We had to. Never in a case like this before have I seen where these threats came out against people who was working this case. And you hear people say, "Well, you know," but you think that really happened? Hey, they killed eight people. Heck, yes, it could happen. But we took those real. So you imagine what that done to the family members. I mean, us as, as law enforcement, we're used to bad things happening to us and around us. That's what you're trained for. But we're not used to that happening to our family. Now it's personal. And they made it personal in some, especially with, with Agent Scheider. And uh, I, I mean, I look across, there's been uh, or people involved in the case. They've given birth to children. I mean, we've got a bond here that we'll, we'll never, ever lose. That's the good thing about this case and, and the friendships that was made even with the family. But, but I just want, hope people understand how this was on all the families besides the victims. It was tough. Gosh, I don't know. I, I mean, just overall, they just, um, they don't back down. Uh, they're not going away. Um, and, you know, I think possibly the day that we decided to talk to Jake um, and we met with them and, you know, again, you work with your victims and you have to have their okay when you are going to do something huge like that. And we were wondering, like, well, you know, there's so many people. Are they all going to agree? Are they? All? And down to the last person, they were like, "Get going! What are you? What are you wasting your time talking to us here for?" And again, just I mean, sitting in the courtroom, listening to Jake Wagner say guilty, time and again, and 
and seemingly without any remorse. And again, it's that grace and dignity that Andy talked about. It just is so, it, it is true about each one of them. And um, it, is, it is such an impressive, impressive thing. So, Andy, what's it feel like when you, you, were, when you were examining uh, Jake? I mean, you were standing pretty close to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, he's a convicted murderer now, killed eight people. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a mother, as, as a person in this community, uh, as, as a human being, what's it feel like standing that close to somebody like that? Yeah, I think when I was crossing, or when I was directing, I guess, Jake and Angela, I, we can remember vividly watching Angela just say these unkind things about the victims, right? Um, and, and yeah, that was hard to continue to talk to her kindly. <laughs> and, um, you know, and of course, I mean, you guys saw their testimony. There, there, there was no remorse for the victims in this case. Um, so yeah, I mean, that I felt the same way about them that all of you did, I'm sure. So now you've got three of four that have either been found or admitted uh, and pleaded guilty. Do you think there's any way you can get the fourth to, to, to do this without going through a trial? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's probably something we shouldn't be addressing because, again, as attorneys, we're not allowed to comment on pending cases, facts, or anything like that. So um, I guess I'm going to have to say on behalf of all of us, I have no comment on that. We'll just wait and see. And Anjanette, I saw your hand up. I wanted to ask uh, about Jake and Angela because in covering this case, um, I was somewhat surprised that Jake was the first one to uh, break. I always thought it would be somebody else. Um, how surprised were you when he actually wanted to entertain pleading guilty? Say very very it uh, yeah obviously there's still things we can't really discuss because of the you know, pending fourth case but let's just say and I'll defer to Coach counsel on this as well we were very very surprised <laughs> can you elaborate at all just because he is the center of <coughs> this conspiracy hmm. yeah I think it? probably more the the really big difficulty of it being Jake was that he was the hardest one to justify dismissing the death spec against, right? So that was the that was the difficulty, I guess. But again, and you know, I meant what I said in my in my closings, you know, obviously he led us to evidence. Obviously his testimony, you know, helps us hold the other four, you know, all four of them accountable. But but also they wanted to know what happened. And, and that mattered a lot. Um, and, you know, you can talk about, well, when's the last time you heard somebody got executed and all that stuff? You know, would this ever even happen, even if he did get convicted? You know, all that stuff plays in. But, yeah, um, I would say we were surprised, but also struggled with that weighing, weighing process. Was there a concern the jury was going to be overwhelmed with all of the evidence, all of the testimony? I know we were wondering, I think because they so, they lived it for so long, and some of it got you know was very repetitive or redundant or whatever you want to say. Um, I think though the the benefit of presenting it that way is then they've seen everything they need to see, and they don't necessarily have to go back and sift through it because they've already sifted through it a lot as you go, you know. But yeah, I mean, you know, you never know how a jury is going to. You know, and I think the prosecutors involved are the, the worst judges of, of that because you're so, you know, involved in it. Speaking of the strategy and the way you laid it out, how much of your presentation and the, and the presentation of all the evidence was not just for the jury, but for the community of Pike County to see, to show everybody, this is the length the investigation went to, and this is, this is what happened. This is specifically how we went through this, but this is what happened and how we came to this conclusion. Yeah, probably f fair to say, as prosecutors, our most important job is absolutely to 
get a defendant convicted with as much evidence as we can. That being said, though, it is nice to have everything out there. Because I can tell you, when this case came up, you know, people were saying, well, it's the cartels, and I'll just go ahead and say it. We had a crooked sheriff who's sitting in Toledo Correctional right then now where he needs to be. His name was coming up. Weird stuff was coming out of the woodwork. You know, I personally, like, got a call at the office from somebody that said they were psychic. That's, that's a lot of the stuff we had to deal with and Ryan and his team had to deal with and filter it out. But it's nice to be able to get that out for the citizens of Pike County and everywhere else that that was not the case. It was the Wagners, and you saw today, George Wagner IV was convicted of assisting in the murders of eight innocent people. And that and that alone is what happened. No cartels, no crooked sheriffs, no anything like that. It was them. They did it. Three of them have been convicted. We'll and now one, everybody knows. Take one more question. How important is this, this, the cyber stuff? That seemed to be really the, what turned you on to the Wagners, um, for lack of a better term. Talk to us about, was that to you, aside from the yeah. shoes and the Walmart video, the most important thing, the cyber stuff? Yeah. So the laptop we got from Montana was a gold mine. I mean, from the screenshots to knowing that, you know, everything that we kind of suspected was going on was, we didn't know that they had seen the, the message from Hannah until we got that laptop, you know. So that stuff became important. And quite on, out of the recordings also, you know, being able to kind of have that bird's eye view into the family dynamics. Um, a lot of times the investigators didn't think we were getting anything because they weren't confessing. Um, but they were in many ways, and I feel like when, at least I think, when we heard the 2018 recordings, it really demonstrated who George is and how he thinks, you know, and we would not have been able to do that in any other way. So yeah, I think certainly the ballistics, the shoe print evidence, the, you know, purchases, the finances, all that stuff, but the cyber stuff, and, you know, obviously our, our analysts are just... You know, I keep saying the brains of the, the brains of the outfit, but um, you know, again, just their dedication and perseverance, and you know, especially in Schneider and them going through, I think what 480,000, um, you know, images on the this, you know, laptop to you know come up with, you know, some of the critical evidence that we had. Did you have an opportunity to talk to the jury, and if so, did they indicate to you what pieces of evidence or testimony influenced them the most? I don't think I can comment on that. Sorry. Okay, we, we did, but we won't them. comment. Did talk to them, but can't comment. Yeah. Okay, we won't take any more questions. I understand that there might be some people who want to take a collective picture. So I. Uh, oh, yes, wait. Does we... anybody from the family All right. want yeah. to speak? Tony, oh, okay. okay. So sorry. Right. So sorry. So sorry. Okay. okay. So if you guys want to condense, condense a little bit for a few pictures, and that will conclude our press pictures? conference. Okay. I would like to thank the citizens of Pike County. I would like to thank the citizens of the state of Ohio for bearing this burden that should have never happened to this family in Southern Ohio. Just commenting, Tony, about how the relationship seemed to be one of affection between the Wagners and at least your brother Chris and so forth. What do you make of all this madness? You said the word. Madness. madness. What did you feel when you heard the first guilty verdict? What was going through your, your mind and anyone else you'd care to comment? I feel sorry for him. Why is that? Why? 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 Because he is human. How do you find the humanity at a time like this when he did so much to your family? I think we all have human in us. There's just a difference in us. Tony, what did your mom say? That's between us. Okay. Tony, this has been such a long, awful road for you all. I, I, I'm sure you're feeling a lot of emotions, but can you give us any sense of what you're feeling just right now? A little bit of peace. We still have a long road to go. We'll get there. Because we are family. Are you yes. hoping that this this now will put pressure on Billy to, to plead guilty? We can only hope. We can do anything. What would you share some thoughts about your loved ones that sadly are no longer with us? Because we concentrated so much on the legal proceedings. I can't even fathom. Just take a moment to talk about 
the, your loved ones. They were human beings. Yeah, they were human beings. Yeah. They're gone. Nothing we can do on this earth will ever bring them back. It sounds like you have hope and faith that maybe you'll be reunited one day. Well, you know, there is a judge and a jury on this earth, but there is a God. you got to believe in somebody. George Wagner. Just the family have we a reaction? that it did come back. But you have to realize, George Wagner is human. You know, they just didn't show it on that night. Good. George and Wagner won't face the death penalty. How do you feel about that? Of some of the things that were happening and the, some of the things that they said about your family that came out during this trial. I think we all say things that we shouldn't say in life. And you just have to find a way to step around it and find the innocent you know, side of everybody. Tony, I'm not going to mention the names of the children because that's personal to you and that's been my tact. But the world has been watching this, praying that you know, the granddaughter is, your loved one is well. What can you tell us about that situation? She is very well being taken care of. She's, she's turned nine years old, right, Tony? Uh, what, what, would you, what would you say to George Wagner before? What, what message do you have to him? It should have never happened. It should have never right. happened. Never. If he really loved his child, it should have never happened. And he well, said he loved Tony, Hannah, you guys too. have been in almost every one of these for like four years now that we've been here. Yes. I, I guess, how have like how have you gotten through coming here to each of these hearings and sitting there and watching this? It's family. If you have family support, you what can you make do. it. We hang on to each other. That's right. Yes. We won't the face the death penalty. How do you feel about that? Tony. That's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. I Tony. can't answer that. When, when, Sorry, when Dick what... testified earlier in the trial, apparently he looked at the family and said, I'm sorry. What was your reaction to that? Sorry for what? <laughs> for being not human? Yeah. Fell on deaf ears. How, how difficult, Tony, was it for you all to sit there and watch him talk about this in such a cavalier fashion? I believe you can answer that yourself. He was there. Most of you was there. Talk about Geneva a little bit. Been through this, been through a lot. How's she doing now? How is she how is she coping? That's the rock. She's holding up great. That's the rock. She's awesome. Yeah. She's the one who got us this far. Yep. Yeah, Tony, Her what's and some, Judy. Yeah. Tony, what's something and that gives you hope right now? Andrea. Yeah. Uh, the question, what's something that gives you hope right now? It's, what, what gives you hope right now? We're one step closer. T Tony, what's what's in your heart right now? A little bit of peace. Yeah, a little bit of peace. What do you mean one step closer, Tony? One step closer, meaning there's one more to go, Billy Wagner, or what? Well, we have to do that. We have to do that. I think as a victim, you have to take those steps. You all know that. I think as we all listen to you, we, I, I have a sense that you're just gracious. You just seem like a very peaceful, gracious person. That's just who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Which He's I think is a lot more than us. a lot of us could say from a lot of people we know. Like I said, a lot of it is your upbringing and the people around you and family that you believe in. You know? And if you have that, you can be at peace. This is really our first chance to hear from you and the whole family. It's so enormous for any of us to get our minds around what happened. Let's, that's the reality. But you're living it. Do you, as we, Christmas, will you will just be able to kind of be still a little bit more easily? And you've lost so much, I can't even fathom. So nobody can, but you're living this nightmare. What is that like? We just want to be left alone and enjoy our family during the holidays. Might you, might, you say it, there's Christmas. Christmas. Mm -hmm. might you say anything about the investigation and the um, the prosecution team? It seems as though there was a bond there. In they terms all done a wonderful job. job. We'd never be here without them. That's right. They've done a great job. It's what been six like and a half years yes. with them, so we yes. are very close. Yeah. Yeah. What would you like and to most say? of you have been around them, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to say to the jury? Thank you. 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 What's yeah. a tough burden? <laughs> yeah. yeah. None <laughs> of us can say what they dealt with. What does the day mean burden. to Chris Senior, to Dana, to Hannah, to Chris Junior, to Gary, to Getta? Frankie. A Frankie. little bit of peace. A little bit of peace. They can rest in peace? Not yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. Not yet.
Got one more to go, right? Got one more to go. Tony, just really, I, I was surprised, maybe not surprised, but you, you guys are very gracious. You're talking about you have humanity, you're a human, that George is a human. Where does that come from? You said upbringing. Um, what, the what? lady that's standing in that building. It's worked out. Your mom. She's wrong. Because it'd be real easy to be just mad and angry and everything else, and I don't sense that you know you all have that in your hearts. That's you incredible. Didn't see that. Yeah, you didn't see that. You've been very stoic and just handle it as it comes, right? Yes. Good. How, how many days? Patient. Yeah. Where does yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> you learn <laughs> to be patient. What's the alternative? You have to believe in somebody. You know, yeah. I mean, if you don't believe in the people that's trying to prosecute this. You have to believe in somebody. Well, let's ask to that point, and we'll, we won't belabor it. I know you guys want to, you'll be done with this, but to Chris's point, walk us back for a minute because everyone wanted, I did a story about the Mexican cartel doing it in, you know, in Cincinnati, wondering what had happened. What was it like those first couple of years before the arrest where you just didn't, you just had no idea, presumably? It's like <clears throat> if you would go rabbit hunting, you know, sometimes a rabbit will run in a hole and then he'll jump back out and run again. And that's what the investigators were doing. Yeah. So it was very frustrating, but you have to believe. Tony, what happened tonight for the family? Just talk, just talk about tonight. What happened tonight? What do you guys do tonight? Where's the party? We're going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go home and enjoy our family. Good for you. Yep. Yeah. Well, oh, your entire family? Tonight. Your entire family? We're going to go home and enjoy our family. And sleep a little easier like you said. Yes, we don't take for granted anymore is we it's love family. the ones we got and yeah. never let go. Because you never get to <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me if you would, um, this has been, I mean, you were there that morning. This has been horrendous for you. Um, your feelings right now, your thoughts. I'm just happy. I'm just so happy to see my loved ones get this justice. How is your husband doing? My husband's great. My husband's great. <laughs> did you, did you ever think or feel that this, the Wagners were responsible for this in the beginning? I had no idea in the beginning. No. Yeah. So you had no suspicions at all? No. Not in the beginning. T can you talk to me just a little bit about Hannah Mae and Dana? I remember when you were on the stand, you talked about, you made a reference to Hannah being your, like you said, something it's my baby. So Dana has worked full time since she was a senior. She went to school and she worked full time. And I've always had them kids. I watched them. Them was my babies. So they were basically like your second ch yes. children. Yeah. So Chris and Hannah Mae and Frankie, they were with you a lot. They was always with me. My babies. What do you want? I was like losing my own children. <laughs> what do you want people to know about them? Maybe later. Okay. Let us just get through yeah, to my I understand. First. I'm sorry. Um, I gave your. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? I know you need to go to work. I want to get back in here and hug my loved ones before uh, I leave. I get it. Um, thank you so much. I uh, gave your yes. Yeah. Right. I, I would love to talk with you and James. It's okay. If possible. Maybe later. Yeah.